Hi again, and welcome to our second video lesson here. This lesson is a bit of review of uh, sketching parabolas and solving quadratics. Now, we just began this recently. We're about midway through chapter eight, and we've started solving quadratics, started sketching out parabolas, and eventually there are actually going to be six ways to do this. So let's stop and just pause for a second. That's a lot. I've thrown a lot of information in front of you right now. There are six ways where you can attack any of these equations and figure out what the parabola looks like, how you can sketch it out really quickly and uh, figure out how the function behaves. So a few things we're seeing here is that each of these parabolas, the equations, they're all quadratic functions. Remember what a quadratic function is? That's a, a function where the highest degree, right, the degree of the function, the highest exponent is x being squared. So in all of these here, our variable x, our independent variable, it's being squared, being multiplied to itself somehow. Um, one thing to remember with these, and we'll definitely be using this in the video to help figure out, right, how we can change specific equations to other forms in order to help us graph things. Uh, we'll remember that there are exactly three different forms of a quadratic function that we care about right here. We have the standard form up here, the factored form up here, and the vertex form up here. So at this point, hopefully it's been introduced to you what uh, one or two things are that the standard form tells us about the graph, what one or two things are that the factor form tells us about the graph, and what one or two things are from the vertex form that tells us about the graph. So let's dive into it. In this video, we're just going to do number one, number two, and number three, because these are the only three ways that we've really seen how to sketch a parabola so far in class. Uh, steps four, five, and six, methods four, five, and six, those will be coming up later in chapter eight. And in fact, this last one, number six, the quadratic formula, that's a big one. That won't be coming up until chapter nine. So you don't have to worry about it for this video, but I want to put everything on here because this is every method that we have to sketch a parabola very quickly. So starting with number one, we have factoring, solving by factoring, and then hopefully getting a parabola out of that. So what do we mean by this? We have our equation right here, and as we see our equation, there are zero parentheses, no parentheses whatsoever. So we know that this is written in standard form. So if our goal here is to solve this one by factoring, you need to change this into factored form. So we need to write in factored form form. So we need to factor this quadratic. I know that in the previous videos we talked about a shortcut. What are two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 2? So if you can do that in your head, great. If not, um, let's just do it the old-fashioned way. Let's factor using a rectangle and a diamond problem just so that we can prove that we have this quadratic factored accurately. So I'm going to put x squared here. I'm going to put negative 8 up here. Of course, the diagonal multiplies to negative 8x squared. I'm just going to put negative 8 on the top, though, uh, for simplicity. And then the bottom, that's where our x's go, our negative 2, the amount of x's we have. So this part, this diagonal of the rectangle, that's where our x's go. We have negative 2 of those, so we need to get our x's to add to negative 2. But they also need to multiply to negative 8x squared. So quickly figuring out this diamond problem here, two numbers that multiply to negative 8, well, negative 8 has 4 and 2, multiplies to 8. Um, so if we do a negative 4 and positive 2, that will satisfy our diamond problem. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And multiply together, the product will be negative 8. And I'll put that here. Negative 4x times by and negative 2x will give us that negative 8x squared. Factor the outside and we get our factors good to go. Right here and right here. So I've rewritten this in the factored, I'll write this in a second actually, in the factored form. Factored form. Just as a reminder, your factored form is this. Y equals A times by X plus B times by X plus C. And we're gonna see, we're gonna be reminded in a second what B and C represent about our parabola and why we're doing this, right? We're trying to get points of the graph. So if I rewrite this here, a here is just one. We don't see an a in front of our x squared term, so we don't have to worry about that. Our factor form here is y equals, well, one. We could write it, but I'm not going to write it because it doesn't matter. If our a is one, we don't need to write the one. 
I'm going to write here our factors here, x minus 4 times by x minus 2. So now I've factored this quadratic. One step just gets us to here, and I think you know what that's going to tell us about the parabola, because your next step is to solve for the x-intercepts. And you should tell yourself at this point, just to make sure you know how everything kind of connects together here, I know there are tons of connections on this assignment. When you're looking for x-intercepts, you got to remind yourself, x-intercepts, those are the values of x when y equals 0. So I'm going to replace, I'm going to take our factored form here, I'm going to replace y with 0, and then I have x minus 4 times by x minus 2. And this here is the part where we use the zero product property. Reminders on zero product property, that's the product, that's the property that tells us as long as one of these two factors is zero. So if this factor is zero, for instance, x minus four, say that here equals zero. And it's a factor, right? Because we have parentheses. Parentheses times parentheses. Parentheses written to each other means multiplication. So if this parentheses right here, x minus four, if that equals zero, then we would know, regardless of what that equals, right? So if we plug in a number for x here, we get this factor equal to zero. It doesn't matter what number this x plot minus two would represent, because a zero times any other number would result in a product of zero. So simply to solve a problem, a quadratic like this, and we'll get lots more practice on this too, all you need to do is solve for whatever value would make this factor, x minus four, equal to zero. And that would be four, right? Four minus four is zero. That's one of our solutions here to this equation. The other solution, well, if that is zero, were zero multiplied to this would cancel this one out to become zero, the zero product property would also work if that factor were equal to zero. If x minus two equals zero, it doesn't matter what x minus four would be. It would just cancel it out. So here, if x were to equal two, right? So if we put in two for x, two minus two is zero. It doesn't matter that this would be 2 minus 4, right? Negative 2, because 0 times by negative 2 would equal 0. So see here, whatever value of x here would make either of these factors equal to 0, that's one of your solutions. And there, I've found my x-intercepts. And those are at 4, 0, and negative 2, 0. So here I have my roots, 4, 0, and negative 2, 0. And in fact, I actually can sketch out my parabola right now. And I'll show you why in a second, how I can get all information from this parabola. First of all, this is negative 2, 0. I have my roots, negative 1, negative 2. And I'll scale by 1s here. And then I'll go up to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So one thing that I told you earlier in class and I'll mark where those roots are right here and right here, is that as long as you know what two of the key features are on a parabola, you're able to sketch it out. So here we have one of the features here. We have the x-intercepts. And that's helpful because we know that our graphs will be rooted here. And um, remember, x-intercepts can be called roots or zeros of a quadratic. Um, so we know they're rooted here. So then the question is just, what does the rest of the problem look like? How far does it go down? Does it well, does it go down or does it do we go up and then back down? Is there a minimum point or is they, there a maximum point? So we know that by looking at this, um, this is going to have a minimum point, a low vertex, because our A here is 1. It's positive, so it's going to be an upward-facing parabola. So we don't really need to worry about this right now. The thing I want to remind you of is to show you that this in standard form, we can go back to this, that this here would actually be our y-intercept, the very top, our c value. So looking at this here, our c value of the quadratic is our y-intercept. That can tell us the c value of our standard form. So standard form is good for y-intercept. And then just a reminder here, just looking at this a little bit closer, um, what do you notice here about the factors? We have a here and then we have b and c. Well, b and c, B and C are actually what the opposite signs of whatever your x-intercepts are, right? Opposite of x-intercepts are. So our B here was negative 4, so that means we had an x-intercept at positive 4. Our B here was at negative, uh, was negative 2. 
we had an x-intercept at uh, positive 2. Ooh, what did I do wrong here? This should have been x minus 4 times x plus 2. And then this is x plus 2. So our x-intercepts were at negative 2 and um, positive 4. So here are y-intercepts at negative 8. I can find that on my 6, 7, 8. I can find that on my graph. So now I have these three points here, and that's good. Two key features. I have my x-intercepts, and I have my y-intercepts, and I can graph out my parabola. So remember, I did not find my y, uh, my vertex. I could have found my vertex somewhere around here, um, but I'm just estimating it here. As long as I have two features, I can sketch the graph because I know the graph is going to have symmetry. So this would actually have a line of symmetry at x equals 1 because that would be the average of the roots. The line of symmetry is exactly halfway between the roots. 4 and negative 2 are the roots. So if I wanted to double check line of symmetry, right, it would be at x equals r1 plus r2 divided by 2. Those stand for roots here, roots. Um, I could get it by getting my r1 would be 4, and my other root would be negative 2 divided by 2. And I could ver verify that our line of symmetry uh, would have to be at 4 minus 2 divided by 2. Well, that's 2 divided by 2 would have to be at 1. So I would find that I have a line of symmetry here. So I can make this graph. It probably just, it, remember, a parabola is a smooth curve that goes down and then it repeats itself. It's symmetric. And you sketch it out and you're good to go. If you're really worried about this, you could just solve for the vertex. Um, here, the vertex, we know our line of symmetry is at 1 because that's halfway between the roots. We could have plugged 1 into our equation and then figured out that uh, our vertex would have to be down at negative 9 because 1 squared is 1 minus 2 times 1, right, would be get us down to negative 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 8 would be negative 9. So you could actually solve for your vertex if you wanted to.